Hello everyone, welcome to another video. So today's video is about a dairy farmer called the Sask Dutch Kid. He has a YouTube channel and he sort of documents his daily work life where he milks and exploits about 300 cows. So recently the Sask Dutch Kid has decided to take it upon himself to debunk some common vegan lies about the dairy industry. So today I'll be responding to his video entitled The Truth about artificial insemination. So I've been here on YouTube for six months or so now talking to a camera and in that time I've had a ton of hate comments, a ton of comments from vegans and animal activists. Great work vegans and animal activists. Who just maybe don't know what they're talking about. Don't know what we're talking about. Interesting, let's hear it. And I wanted to make a little bit of a mini video series here on the channel talking about some of those subjects. Artificial insemination, why we take the calves away from the cows, and stuff like that. Well, I'm gonna have my work cut out for me because this might not be the only response video that I make. I wanna preface these videos by saying I have nothing against vegans or I don't care if you drink milk or eat meat. So he prefaces the video by paying lip service to vegans, which is a very common thing that people do when they're not vegan. Oh, it's great that you're vegan, just don't force it on me. And then he goes on to say, I don't care if people eat meat or drink milk, when literally his entire business depends on the demand for meat and dairy. So like, yeah, you do, because you wouldn't have a job. You would go out of business if people didn't eat meat and dairy. So of course you're gonna take it upon yourself to debunk the detrimental claims that are levied against your industry by animal lovers and vegans and activists. But I think there needs to be a line drawn when you start to lie and use mistruth and misinformation to try and manipulate people into adhering to your agenda. Sounds exactly what the dairy industry do every year with their propaganda campaigns trying to talk about humane dairy and you know we take the calves away from their mother to protect the calves it's nothing to do with the fact that the calf will drink the milk that we need to sell you know we kill them painlessly it's completely humane you know not nice on the on a pasture and they love it the cows love being milked that's exactly what the dairy industry does to propagate their agenda and yeah vegans and animal activists do have an agenda it's a positive agenda about animal liberation and we're against animal abuse and cruelty the dairy industry is inherently cruel so I hope this video series can help debunk a couple of those lies and um, you know kind of set the record straight. So today we're going to be talking about artificial insemination and uh, why we use it here on dairy farms. I'm all ears, mate. Wow, mate, that's some really warm-hearted and uplifting music to introduce such a sinister industry and their practices. So what is artificial insemination or AIing a cow? Basically what it is, is you have a straw of semen and you inject it in the cow's uterus so that you can manually get her pregnant without needing to have a bull in the barn. You know what a euphemism is? It's where someone uses another word to describe something that's actually very horrific and disturbing. So, you know, you know, we just get a tube of semen and we artificially inseminate the cow so we don't need a bull in the barn. Just really brushes over it casually. What you do is you get your fist and you put it inside the anus of the cow. You hold the cervix and you get the pipette full of bull semen, which was masturbated out of a bull, okay? two very violating things, two very disturbing things that you're doing to both of these animals, to all of these animals, and then you're injecting uh, to, you know, force a pregnancy on a cow that cannot give consent. So a ton of vegans and animal activists will want you to believe that this is rape. Well, that's because it is rape. Cows are not capable of giving consent. You know, just like an underage child is not capable of giving consent, someone with a severe mental handicap is not capable of giving consent, or someone that's been drugged is not capable of giving consent. These cows are not capable of giving consent to use. So yes, it is right. But that's just not the case because a cow doesn't have a bias as to who breeds her. A cow doesn't have a bias as to who breeds her? That's just patently false. In this 1998 study, cows apparently assessed variance in male quality and approached high-ranking bulls and ran away from low-ranking bulls. There we go. They do have a bias as to who they breed with. But when they're in a dairy farm, they don't have a choice because you only put whatever bull you want in there. And either way, even if a cow didn't have a bias, which we've proved they do, that in no way justifies a human being who is a moral agent to take advantage of her. Uh, for example, if I was to take a perfectly in heat heifer and put her in a pen with a bull, they would breed 100% of the time if she, you know, she was in heat. And if I took that bull out 21 days later when she came in heat again and put a different bull in there, there'd be no hesitation. She would get her business done. Uh, with that bull and she wouldn't care who the bull was. So this guy, he puts one bull in a pen, you know? The, the cow doesn't even have a choice to select her mate. Only the one mate that is locked in the pen with her. 
So do you think that's a choice? And it's almost like he's trying to say that because animals act in a certain way, because a bull acts in a certain way and the cow acts in a certain way, that, that then's a justification for him to act in the same way. You see, the cows do it in nature. Therefore, I, as a moral agent, a human being, am allowed to participate in the behavior that happens in nature, which is an appeal to nature fallacy. You can't navigate your morality based on what the animals in nature are doing or what cows' behavior is. You are a human being and you are a moral agent. We don't say, oh, because lions kill in nature that it therefore justifies us to kill each other or because bulls rape cows or cows just let whoever they want sleep with them that that then justifies our sexual behavior in a civilized society does it and she doesn't care so she doesn't care so this guy's a cow whisperer now he knows her deepest thoughts Cows just don't care whether they get enslaved or whether they get forcibly impregnated or whether they get led down the kill line to a slaughterhouse. They just don't care. They're just mindless machines with no wants or desires. They don't avoid pain and suffering. They don't get uncomfortable. They don't care. I'm, go I'm still going to say this. Even if it was proven that the cow didn't care, it still wouldn't morally justify the action. Because let's just say you have you know, a small child who'd been brought up in this system of exploitation and raised, you know, within the confines of some weird kidnap facility. They got conditioned to this way of living and they no longer cared that their, you know, victimizer raped them. That would not justify the rape. And in the same way, someone with a mental handicap and they couldn't really understand what was happening to the point that they cared, that would not justify a moral agent taking advantage of that person or animal. It just doesn't. Because as a moral agent, you are morally culpable. You can't hold a bull morally culpable. It, just because a cow acts in a certain way, it doesn't mean that you're justified to, you know, advance on her or, or violate her. The only time a procedure like that would be morally justified if it, if it was in the cow's best interest, but it's not. It's in your best interest as a milk seller. That's all. That's the only reason you're getting her pregnant, not because you need to intervene for some medical emergency to help the cow. It's because you want to fist her and inject bull semen into her so you can produce calves and produce milk and sell the calves and sell the milk. The second thing that kind of proves that this isn't rape is I can go into the freestall barn here and if the cow's just freely standing in there, I can go up to her and AI her. I can give her every chance to walk away while I'm doing the process, the entire process. And a lot of the time when they're in strong heat, they'll actually just stand there and allow me to do it. And I actually got it on video two times here in the last week. So his claim is that it's not rape because the cow didn't resist and she just allows him to do it. So let's apply this in a different context with like a woman if they were drugged and they were sufficiently impaired to the point where they just you know, didn't resist and they just allowed the attacker to do it, would that then morally justify that, that rape? Like, and as I mentioned before, if someone was severely mentally handicapped and they didn't understand and they just allowed an attacker to do it, does that morally justify the action if you're a moral agent? Of course it doesn't. You know, there's a quote that I like to use and it's, the more vulnerable the victim, the greater the crime. There's also something in the legal sense called statutory rape, whereby an older person uh, can be charged for co coercing and having intercourse with a younger individual. And this is a law for a reason. So at a certain age, you just, you can't make, you know, moral decisions for yourself about sexual intercourse. So they hold the older person responsible for coercing the younger person because the younger person isn't old enough to conceptualize consent to the greatest extent. And I would use that analogy in this context here. Uh, so you guys can watch that right now and you know, judge it for yourself. Do you think it's rape or not? Because I give these ladies every chance to walk away from me artificially inseminating them and uh, they don't. I give these ladies every chance to run away in their pen where they can't escape. So these, this is an intensive farm where they're all behind big fences and they can't escape him even if they tried. Um, I want to talk to you about like Stockholm Syndrome, which is a psychological response that occurs when hostages or abuse victims bond with their captives or abusers. And this could be another thing to explain why the cows don't try to escape. So this guy's literally separated from their mother upon birth straight away immediately and he's beginning to bottle feed these infants and you know he is like the only guardian they've ever known because they've been separated from their mother kept in confinement and he's the one who's fed them like this is where the stockholm syndrome uh, effect comes in these dairy farmers are like the only guardians or parents these calves have ever known me artificially inseminating them and uh they don't i'm just putting the gun through her cervix here This is interesting. So now he's showing the footage of the AI to prove that they don't struggle, to prove that they, they're not restrained or something. But he just cut to the point where his fist is already inside the anus of the cow. 
why didn't you show the insertion process? That's the part that's uncomfortable. You know, I know why he cut, I know I'm an editor, so I edit, I edit most of my own videos. And he cut it to that point because he specifically left out the part where he lubes up his fist and inserts it because that's where the cow struggles. That's the point the cow struggles. So he's deliberately, you know, cut it to that part. He's already got the pipette of semen in there. You know, you didn't show us anything, dude. Very, very sinister, very shady. There we go. Make sure it's in the right spot. And just his casual way he's going about, it. see now all I'm doing is I've got the pipette of semen in there. Like he's so casual about it. He's overly casual about something that's, you know, maybe he's just overly conditioned, but I believe he's being overly casual to sort of calm people down and go, oh look, it's not right, the cow wants it. Awesome. Awesome, that is awesome. That is awesome. You got your fist inside the, the anus of a cow, poo all over your hand. You think that that's awesome? I think that that's disturbing and it's disgusting to me. So she just stood there. You guys can see she's not locked up in any way. Like the cow's just like looking back like, like what, what the hell? Like who knows what this cow's thinking, but you know, the dairy farmer knows because he's a mind reader with cows. This cow is in very strong heat right now and she doesn't care. And again, Mr. Dairy Farmer, thanks for speaking up for the cow. You're saying she doesn't care. Like, look, she doesn't care. Like, I know she doesn't care about any of this. She doesn't care about any of the processes that we, we do to the cow. The cows love it in here. Like, they don't care. Whatever we do, violate them, you know, mutilate them, you know, take their calves away. They just don't care. Like, this is me, the dairy farmer, speaking on behalf of the animals. No, I prefer animal rights activists speaking up for me, not you. You don't have their best interest at heart. You have financial interest at heart. Here, I'll speak for the cow. What you're doing is extremely perverted. She doesn't care who breeds her, how it's done. Uh, she just wants to get bred right now, so. See again, in this clip, it doesn't show the process of insertion. Why not? Let's go back. Bread right now, so. Notice how he's only cutting to the clip where it's already in? Ah, uh, not good enough, mate. Not good enough. Now, even if so, if so, even if he, let's just say he goes, oh, okay, Joey, I'll respond to you. I'll make a clip where the cow doesn't walk away. It's still, is violating the cow. It's still, they cannot give consent. It's still sexually exploiting these animals for your own financial interests. But still, this edit is cut in a very sinister way. You didn't show us anything, mate. You think like, come on, you think that we're stupid or something? Why didn't you show the, the beforehand? Why didn't you show the whole process? Not when your fist is already up inside the cow. The cow, of course, it's not gonna move. It's got a fist up her ass. Of course, she's not gonna, she's gonna stay still. If she moves around now, it's gonna hurt. I look at her head tilted over to the side like, do you think like, I don't know, just, I, I just don't believe this farmer that he thinks these cows are just fine with it. When does a bull insert into the anus anyway? Like, I think a bull would go into the vagina. I don't think a bull has like, <laughs> goes into that hole anyway. Like, I, I know this is graphic guys and I'm sorry for that, but it has to be addressed. He's got his fist inside the cow's anus and a little pipette in her vagina. So. The ball's gonna go into the vagina like it is naturally. But either way, it's just not the natural way these cows breed. I mean, the fist in the anus isn't gonna be comfortable for anyone. And the thing is, like, resistance is futile anyway. Like, what are they supposed to do, run away from him? He's got, he's got them encaptured, they can't run away. These cows have been so well trained by this guy to follow commands and orders. Come on, ladies. Come on. Let's go. Just look how they listen to every single direction when feeding and being milked. So therefore, it's not hard to believe that these cows have also become accustomed to the AI process. So there you guys go. Um, again, this cow can walk freely anywhere in the barn. Um, she's not forced to stay there. She's not tied up. She's not locked up in any way at all. Uh, yeah, she's literally forced to stay in that barn. She's forced to stay in that caged off area. Like she's free to walk anywhere she wants. No, no, no. So, so like again, like how can the cow get away from you? And what would happen if the cow resisted anyway? What would happen to that cow if they resisted? You would just lock her up in your cattle crush. So you guys can see there the first cow that I AI'd, uh, she stood perfectly still. So we don't know that she stood perfectly still. You didn't show the insertion process. You cut that part out. And also like, even if she did, do you think that the fact that the cow stood perfectly still while you AI'd her justifies the fact that you've got a massive farm here with 300 cows that are all going to the slaughterhouse and you're exploiting them for every drop of milk they have, separating the calves from their mothers? You know, do you think that, that the fact, oh, but the cow doesn't move when I AI them, justifies this horrific 
you know, sinister industry that you're taking part in here? Have a look at it. These are all sentient animals in a massive, big, intensive farm being treated as milk machines and then slaughtered and turned into steak. Like, this is the biggest animal rights violation on the planet. So the fact a cow doesn't move, which I don't believe you anyway, the fact a cow doesn't move when you AI her does not justify the entire thing. And on top of that, the animals can't consent to AI anyway. Still, she just was in really good heat, so she, she didn't care. She stood there. I gave her every chance to walk away. I gave her every chance to walk away. Like, how's that for a justification? I, I mean, it's just, it just boggles my mind. They don't have any chance to escape from you, mate. They don't, they're, in a, they're in a massive facility there. And I wonder if you'll give her every chance to walk away when it's time for her to be slaughtered at the slaughterhouse. Will you let her go down the kill line and would you let her, would you let her try to escape the kill floor? Cows do try to escape the kill floor. They're absolutely terrified in those places. Are you going to let her escape that? Every chance to walk away? Are you going to, take, are you going to get consent off the cow uh, for her slaughter? I don't think you are because at the end of the day, she's just a product to you. You don't give a shit about these cows. You care about the money that you make from them. Um, and a lot of people might say, oh, she's in a barn. She knows she can't get away at the end, but... Uh... Exactly, people like me. So see how he just, it was a Freudian slip there? And people might say that she can't get away anyway. Exactly, she can't get away. She's, she's enslaved by you and your farm. A cow will not hesitate to just run away from you if you're doing something she doesn't like. So that's a pretty bad argument. How do you know that? How do you know that? How do you know a cow won't hesitate to walk away if you're doing something that she doesn't like? I think you know because I think you know that cows sometimes don't want you to do things and you still do them. And uh, the second one there, she did move around a little bit, um, but eventually she stood perfectly still and allowed me to complete the process. I don't know what this guy's trying to prove here. Like, look, look, it's not right because, you know, they're not held down in a rack. Most AIs are done in a cattle crush. Most AIs are done in a cattle crush. Look at this Farmer's Weekly magazine here. Like it just says, make sure your cow is appropriately restrained. I mean, this is just AI procedure. They all should be restrained in a cattle crush. And this guy actually has a cattle crush, which is quite funny. Like he's like, I've got this cattle crush. We don't use it though, because the cows want it. You know, they want it. You use your cattle crush. Don't bullshit us. I mean, this is just a massive like counter to the criticism of what he's doing to these cows. So he's trying to make it look as nice as possible. Look, they want it. Look, they want it. I mean, you're not fooling us, mate. I wonder if this guy would mind if someone violated him like this. Let's say he couldn't talk, couldn't defend himself, was held in captivity, and someone was violating him in the same way he violates these cows. And imagine if this cow did fight back. What would happen to the cow? Cattle prodded, held down in a crush, hit. Who knows? Cows are such gentle, submissive animals. They just give up. They don't fight. They're not fighting animals. They just let humans do what they want to them. And that's what's so sad because they, they just can't defend themselves. They're, they're so vulnerable. They're so defenseless that they just allow humans to just fuck with them. So the next question is, why do we even artificially inseminate cows in the first place? And that's a really good question. Bulls can be a lot more aggressive than cows. There's tons and tons of stories of people getting injured in barns. You know, the bull puts his head down and rams in between the head lockers or a post or the beds or something. And there's even stories of people that have died, unfortunately, in barns. So he's basically saying it's in the farmer's best interest not to use bulls uh, because the bulls can be dangerous. That's because you're interfering with these animals. Of course, it, you know, if you get injured, it's your own fault. Mating with bulls is less effective than AI. You know, like when you do AI, you just gar you're guaranteeing uh, impregnating the cow. So it's, it's just much more consistent and effective for the farmers. That had bulls in there. Uh, it's just really not that safe. And we can take that bull out of the barn with artificial insemination and make the working environment in here a lot safer. A lot safer for you, but again, you're not thinking of the animals, you're just thinking of yourself basically with, with these decisions. You want the best of the best genetics, and with artificial insemination, we can ship semen from these bulls across the entire country, and hundreds and hundreds of farmers can use those genetics to make better cows. So they just, they buy the semen off these genetically superior bulls so that the animals that come out through the impregnation process are genetically superior, they produce more milk. So the only time these farmers do anything in the interest of the animal is when it serves their financial interests. So the welfare standards, looking after the cows, disease prevention, and all these things is because the cows are their products. So they're looking after their resource. That's all this is. I mean, dairy farmers act like they're these sanctuary owners and yeah, we love our, we love our cattle like we love our children. Well, that's disturbing. You would never treat children in the way that you treat these cows. You'd actually go to prison. If you truly cared about these animals, you wouldn't be exploiting them for profit and sending them to the slaughterhouse. 
simple. Which means their whole farm is gonna be more efficient and you know that's good for the environment and the farmer as a business owner. It's interesting that a farmer says he cares about the environment, like they care they care about their business more than they care about the environment, let's face it. I mean I think they got twenty one hundred acres of land to feed these 300 cows, it's crazy, like these massive bales of hay and like huge vats full of grain and barley and it's just crazy, the amount of water. And you know, the methane that these cows let off to, is not good for the environment anyway, but I'm talking about the rights violation here. The, the environment comes second uh, for me. This is about the animals and what they're going through and, and how this is just an injustice. The third reason, uh, the bull, if he's in the herd, he can spread diseases pretty quickly. And, and again, they don't care about disease spreading because of the interests of the animal. They don't want disease spreading because, you know, it will spread to their product, their resource. It's all about their own financial interest. It's a running theme. The final reason I'm gonna mention today is we can actually sex that semen and what that means is we can calve out I believe 90 to 95 percent daughters so the reason they use sex semen is purely out of financial interest when they have uh bull calves they're more of a burden let's just say they can't sell off the bull calf for the veal industry or for a steer for the beef industry the market isn't very good they have to dispose of that bull calf now in a dairy industry it makes more sense to have more females so they can have more milk producers so they can have more money and less less waste basically that's how they see it i mean if if 95 percent of them come out as a female then they know they're going to have more females to produce their dairy it's got nothing to do with the interests of the animals it's all about financial interest the reality is bulls just aren't that profitable for a dairy farm. There we go. Bulls just aren't that profitable for a dairy farm. They're a burden and that's why they kill them on site. So we don't want them and instead of calving a bunch out and then not knowing what to do with them, we can only calve out daughters and this is a really beneficial thing for a lot of dairy farms. Like just here in the UK, like 90,000 um, bull calves are slaughtered on the farm, like shot in the head. And some farms use blunt force trauma. Check out my Instagram, at sassdutchkid. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Now, in his in the next video I'm gonna to respond to him is gonna be about what they do with their bull calves on their farm, because not all farms kill their bull calves, you know, straight after birth. Some farms do, some farms raise them, sell, raise them for two weeks, sell them off for veal, and some farms will actually raise them as steers and sell them off for beef, or sell them off to a feedlot so they can raise them for beef. So I'd be happy to have Sask Dutch Kid on the channel to discuss the ethics of the dairy industry, to discuss the ethics of animal agriculture just in general. If you're interested, you can email me at joeycarbstrong at gmail.com and we can set up a discussion, a live discussion on my channel. So thanks for watching everyone. Ditch dairy, choose plant milks and be vegan.